Ready for takeoff. <laughs> to the brink and back. Who's kidding who? The newspaper article read, lung cancer survivor and never smoker should be dead. Not running races in 50 states and every continent. I began running after my lung cancer surgery. It helped me breathe. Now I run to change the horrible face of lung cancer. Some say I've always pushed the envelope. In college, I refused free cigarettes, burned my bra, marched with Martin Luther King, and supported our troops. In 1973, I quit my career as advertising director to become a stewardess with Northwest Airlines. Passengers could smoke on any seat on the aircraft. Secondhand smoke exposure for stews and crew members was 7 to 14 times that of the average person working on the ground. Stews were known for serving coffee, tea, three-course dinners, and survival. I served on an aircraft airline safety and health committee as well. I read several crashes were the result of burning cigarettes bringing down several jumbo jets over the ocean. I was one of three stews who collected signatures for no smoking on airplanes petition. On my third flight, I met this very handsome pilot. We shared rooms on layovers, and I became Mrs. Wortman. While greeting passengers in Japan, 35 years later, I developed a violent choking cough, and I feared I was dying of SARS or, T or TB. A doctor examined me and said, you look great, you're active, you ski, stop drinking airplane coffee. One in 14 people will develop lung cancer in their lifetime. Nearly a quarter million of Americans will be diagnosed with this silent killer this year, every 2.5 minutes, another person is diagnosed. An astounding 40% of these deaths are non-smokers. 2008 did not start out to be so happy. During my Mayo Clinic flight physical, doctors confirmed my choking talk, cough, fatigue, shoulder pain, and night sweats were all lung cancer. Shocked to my core, I snapped, you have the wrong person. I never smoked. The next morning at 0500, I walked into OR, a team of doctors removed my left lung. Post-surgery, my husband stood by my side and said, breathe. I was at the brink. Days later, in hospital physical therapy, I was told, insurance requires you to attend nicotine rehab. I whispered, this is stupid. I never smoked. Anyone can get lung cancer, even never smokers. Only 15% of lung cancer patients will be diagnosed in the early stage when the disease is most curable. My lung tumor was a gene mutation, not something I inherited. Nicotine is the most addictive substance on the planet and the most deadly, no matter how you smoke it. It destroys brain matter and is extremely harmful to nearly every organ of your body, and it can even cause erectile dysfunction. And the stigma stinks. Most people believe if you get lung cancer, you're a smoker, and you deserve to die. My insurance company said, according to statistics, you should be dead. We canceled your life insurance policy. This victimizes all cancer patients who truly need support. Perceptions must be changed with awareness and education. Mayo Clinic Complementary Medicine Department enrolled me in a pace breathing research program for stress and pain management as an alternative to pain pills. This resiliency training helped my mind and nervous system relax with meditation. The mind-body-spirit practices helped me heal my life. Ironically, cancer became a blessing. Nurse Ratchet, my loving husband, drove me to familiar cross-country ski trails. It hurt to breathe. I barely crept 200 yards. Three years later, we attended the Clarkdale, Mississippi Festival, and I ran my first 5K race wearing ballet-type like shoes. I was back. I won second place medal and a Marine asked, hey lady, what's in those shoes? Your lungs hang inside your entire rib cage and they look like tiny champagne grapes. Stretched out, lungs are the size of a tennis court. You can live with one lung. Taking a breath is the first and the last thing we do in life. The incident rate of lung cancer has been decreasing in men, but not in women. One in 14 women will be diagnosed with lung cancer which kills more women and men than breast, prostate, and colon cancers combined each year. So what's causing this disease to rise in women? We need an army of support for lung cancer patients and lung cancer researchers to find out. A Mayo Clinic epidemiology study included 7,000 lung cancer patients and two-thirds were non-smokers. Genetic research has determined that lung cancer in never smokers is considered a different disease entity from that of smokers. 
The lung directive stop smoking does not solve lung cancer. Every person at this race has been devastated by lung cancer and no one smoked. More effective treatment options are needed to prevent disease reoccurrence for all lung cancer patients. Government recommendations for CT scanning apply only to one-third of those smokers who will get lung cancer. Worldwide, lung cancer numbers are affecting families, businesses, medical communities, insurance companies, and government. We must get out of this rut. Writing letters to Congress, requesting policies that protect the health of you and your future generations can be an effective way to move forward. How much do you know about your lungs, really? To help answer this question, we have shared the Healthy Lung Research Project with Mayo Clinic's Dr. Bruce Johnson, who led a team that is widely known for lung and heart research and stress in extreme conditions like those experienced on Mount Everest expeditions with Conrad Anker, MSU, and National Geographic. Running Lung Races invites you to participate in our July Run Walk in Bozeman. Urban Lung Cancer Foundation strives to create awareness about lung health and raise funds for research so lives and quality of life can be saved. 100% of the funds raised are donated to lung cancer researchers in Mayo Clinic. Our happiness, stress, risk of depression, and resilience depend on three things, our genes, our circumstances, and the choices we make. Please make the conscious choice to learn more about the health of your lungs. The life you save could be your own. Thank you.